The Immel tablet itself says, Separate the earth from the fire, and you shall adhere more to that which is subtle than that which is coarse through care and wisdom. Apollonius' commentaries also speak of this when he makes reference to purifying the soul so that it becomes transformed into light. In fact, in his introduction to the Emerald Tablet, Apollonius meets his subtle double in the cavern. This first subtle body beyond the physical is commonly referred to as the astral body. It's actually known in the Hermetic tradition as the lunar body, which eventually can be separated and projected in the world of dreams. The Emerald Tablet says, its father is the sun, and its mother is the moon. Thus the wind bore it within it, and the earth nourished it. This is a reference to the four bodies of the perfect adept. The physical body made of earth is attributed to Saturn, or Kronos. In the physical dimension, it is the world of time. The mention of the moon relates to our lunar body whose field of operation is the world of dreams and is ruled by the moon. The wind bore it within is a reference to the mercurial body, known as the Ba in ancient Egyptian spirituality. And finally, the reference to the sun is in regard to the solar body, body of light or body of glory, that the adept endeavors to create prior to his or her death. Golden Dawn spiritual practice begins with the magical invocation and exercises like the middle pillar, which are designed to strengthen the energetic body, the lunar body in this case, and to charge it with the forces of the elements, of the planets, and of the signs of the zodiac. <clears throat> the secret of the creation of the mercurial body goes beyond ritual magic and belongs to the highest degrees of the Rosicrucian order of Alpha and Omega. This occurs through the impregnation of the lunar body, producing a miraculous birth of the mercurial body, referred to by analogy in the stories both of the miraculous birth of Christ, son of Maria, and of Horus, son of Isis. The rest of the Book of Causes is through and through alchemical, revealing great secrets to the eyes of an initiate. Noteworthy is the instruction, if you would purify your soul so that it becomes as light, you must make certain to begin this work in the spring. Elsewhere, the Book of Causes contains instructions for the preparation, rectification, and multiplication of the Philosopher's Stone, and its use for the transmutation of lead into gold. Only by understanding the relationship between astrology and alchemy can the allegory of the transmutation of lead into gold be properly understood. The traditional correspondences between the alchemical metals of the ancient planets are as follows. Saturn, lead, moon, silver, mercury, quicksilver, Venus, copper, Jupiter, tin, and sun, gold. Saturn is the planet associated in astrology with time and the rules over physical matter. Thus, lead in hermetic alchemy actually represents our physical bodies. The prima materia, or first matter, of the alchemists with which we may begin the opus magnum, our great work. Thus, the allegory of the transmutation of lesser metals, lesser metals into gold actually represents the transmutation of the physical body into ever more refined forms of energy and the cultivation of ever more subtle bodies and higher consciousness. Unfortunately, the word alchemy has been misused to describe many things. For example, some people speak of spiritual alchemy and they speak of this merely as psychological growth or describing certain philosophical speculations. Others use the word alchemy as a synonym for spadgery, a sort of protochemistry that works with plant essences. This is why 
When our order began to reveal the true nature of hermetic alchemy on the internet two years ago, we used the term hermetic inner alchemy to distinguish the initiatic form of alchemy from these other things that have become popular in popular consciousness, which are really a misunderstanding. Unfortunately, to add to the confusion, other schools seeking to imitate us since then have subsequently begun to themselves to use the term inner alchemy to describe what they previously described as spiritual alchemy, meaning philosophical speculations or personal growth in the psychological sense. But the inner alchemy of the hermetic initiates is something quite different and quite specific. And it has to do specifically with the transmutation of the physical body into energy using spiritual practices from the hermetic tradition. The secrets of hermetic inner alchemy have been kept extremely secret among initiates for millennia and still remain so today. The reason for the secrecy is that these practices can be extremely dangerous unless you're properly prepared by the strengthening of the energetic body previously. Thus the transmutation of lead into gold so often referred to in alchemical literature has in reality nothing to do with manufacturing gold. Rather, it refers by analogy to the transmutation of the physical body, prima materia, into pure energy and the cultivation of the energetic or solar body. This is also referred to, or may better be understood perhaps, as the cultivation of soul, with the ultimate goal of giving birth to a body of light or solar body. As an adept grows and learns to project his or her consciousness into that solar body, they become more and more conscious of their immortal nature, even while still alive. And at the conclusion of the great work, at the moment of death, the adept then, the perfect adept, separates his or her consciousness from their physical body and projects it into their solar body, thus achieving liberation from further incarnations and becoming consciously immortal. This is the true goal of the great work of Hermetic Alchemy. This opus magnum, or great work, of completing nothing less than human evolution into pure solar energy is the true object and goal of all hermetic spiritual practice. This may be completed in a single incarnation only using the secret processings of hermetic inner alchemy, to which allegorical reference is made in the long descriptions of laboratory processes of certain classical alchemical texts.